Doom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how do you turn? How do you? Uh, are there instructions for pivoting it? Um, space bar maybe. Oh no, it's it's. it's oh okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. I gotta I gotta I gotta turn down the. Now the perfect thing about my podcast is that I decide to do um, activities with the guests, okay. which makes it really handy for everybody listening at home, so that they'll be like, well, um, uh. And then they're just playing Tetris the whole time. Yeah. And um and so it it's it was a bad bad idea on my part. But now I feel like I can't change it because that's what I do. Well, I liked how uh I watched your last one and, mm-hmm. and y'all were drawing. I mm-hmm. thought that that was interesting. Um I think that it does slow down the conversation a lot. Mm-hmm. And and I, I haven't listened to your podcast. I just uh watched it. But you know, yeah, I don't, I don't know how you overcome that now that you set it up because you're right. It, that I, I was expecting some sort of activity, and then, I, and then once we started talking, I forgot that that was a thing. Uh-huh. And so when you, when you threw the, the idea of playing Tetris at me, which I, I'm telling you, uh, I, well, number one, I'm breaking my Lenten fast right now by playing this game. I didn't <laughs> think about that until just now either. So great. Now I have, I've, I've sinned on the podcast. <laughs> so th- thank you for that. Um, but. Uh, I can, yeah, I don't, I don't, I didn't need to know how easy this was. I can clip that. And uh, what? The, Greg the, Willett sins on my podcast. <laughs> you just, just call the episode Sinner. <laughs> Greg Willett's Mortal Sins S- and uh, Rosary Army yeah. or Tetris. Yeah. So do you, do you understand why I'm not closing off any of these things right now? Um, Because you're waiting to get a bunch and then... And then you you move over to the end. Yeah, like right here. I was waiting. Th- I was waiting for this guy. Mm-hmm. And watch. Oh, it's so satisfying. Whoa. Now I'm just gonna. Now I'm, uh, that that only happens a few times, but <laughs> I'm gonna uh, just clear some of these out. So, was there an arcade by your house when you were younger? There was not a dedicated arcade, but when I when I was in elementary school, there's a place down the street called Flags um, Wine and and Liquor Store. And they let wow. they, they let kids in it, and and, uh-huh. and again, and, and at this time in the, uh, so the first arcade I ever went into was here in Atlanta. Uh, it was over at South Cab Mall, and it was a place called Barrel of Fun. And literally, the entrance <laughs> the, the, the entrance to it was like a great big uh, oak barrel. So it was like a round entrance, and you go into it, and and they had at that time there's the only games were like Space Invaders and and pixel games, pixel based games, uh, asteroids and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And Miss Pac or uh, Pac Man didn't come out, and others didn't come out for about another year or so. Uh, and by that time, we'd moved to Ohio, and we were living in Columbus. And Flags um, was down at the Scioto View Pharmacy uh, shop, or Scioto View uh, Shopping Center, and we went in there. And one day, we'd go in there and get soft drinks or whatever. And one day, we walked in, and they had uh, a video game there. And I believe the first one they got was Vanguard, which mm. was which was pretty awesome. And um, they'd switch it out every few months, but we were never allowed to. Uh, my parents didn't want us wasting money on on video games, and you know, rightfully so because it's like back then. I mean, they're still most of them are a quarter when you come across them. But back mm-hmm. then, it was like, yeah, that was a lot of money. You're putting out a quarter, <laughs> and most of those games were kind of hard. You yeah, couldn't, you couldn't make some of these games last for uh, you know longer than five minutes. Mm-hmm. And you, you'd go through your three lives, and it's like, well, that that that's my allowance for the week. Um, <laughs> But uh, so we'd go down to Flags, and then there was like a there was a river nearby, and there was a little bait store, and they sometimes would get they had like Berserk and mm-hmm. Robotron, and they had an Asteroids game, and so we'd go over there sometimes. So so at that time, when when a place got a video game, mm-hmm. all the kids knew that that place had that video game, and mm-hmm. we we'd go there all the time. And then sometimes you know they they'd have a game, and we'd all get addicted to it. Like there was one game called uh, Quix, Q I X, awesome game, and all flags had that, and we we all loved that. And we walked in one day, and it was gone. We're like, "What Pingo? Why do they got Pingo now? What the heck is Pingo?" It's like, "Well, Pingo was actually a pretty cool game too. I I was better at Pingo than I was at at Quicks." Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, at back then, it was going to if you wanted to go to a genuine arcade, you normally had to go to like a shopping mall in a lot of places, mm. and the shopping malls always had an arcade inside. And so it was like, you know, the idea of like. Now, if your mom said, "Hey, do you want to go shopping with me?" It's like, "Nah, not particularly." <laughs> uh, but back then, it was like, "You know, I'm going to go to the mall. You want to go?" Yeah, 
Ah, fuck it. <laughs> and you're like trying to find, you know, you're you're putting together all the nickels you could find so that you could go and like, you know, cash it in for a quarter, just uh-huh. one quarter, just so I could play one game. And you mm-hmm. walk around, try to pick the game. Um, one of the coolest things was, uh, you know, a- after after arcades have been out for a few years, when uh, the summer between seventh and eighth grade for me, so that would have been um, 1984, um, we had moved to South Carolina uh, just earlier that summer, and we were living in this cabin while our house was being built. And at that time, it was just me and one of my brothers. Uh, we were the only kids left at home, and I, I think that we were my brother and I were driving my mom nuts. And uh, so my dad was would come over to Atlanta on business, mm-hmm. uh, and so we drove over here. I, you know, my dad brought me so that we could, he could get me away from my my brother and give my mom a break and stayed in a hotel and every time we pass this place by the way i tell my kids this story like every time (laughs) they've heard this story so many times Uh because the summer of 84 the olympics were happening in um over in los angeles mcdonald's had an amazing promotion where every time you went to mcdonald's and you'd buy these uh buy anything they'd give you these little cards the scratch off cards and you'd scratch it off and it would have the name of an event an olympic event Mm. and the date on it and if if the uh, United States team scored gold in that event, that card would be worth a Big Mac. <gasps> and if they scored a silver, it was worth fries. And if they scored a bronze, <laughs> you got a drink. Uh-huh. And my dad and I are staying in a hotel, and we're basically getting like the McGriddle meal every breakfast, uh-huh. you know, like the hot cakes and sausage from McDonald's. And he come back to the hotel with a couple of cards. And I, I mean, I literally had a stack of cards. So that <laughs> so so I'm staying in this hotel a lot that summer with him. And then uh, right right around that hotel, there was this there was an amazing arcade at the time, just a little little you know square cinder block building that they, they just a strong wind probably could have knocked this thing over. But uh-huh. um, I, I discovered this place. It's like didn't even have really a good sign. It's like just people just knew it was there. And I walked in, and you could uh, get ten tokens for a dollar. <gasps> Normally, it's like you, know, you get four. Yeah. You get ten tokens for a dollar. I'm like, so every day, my <laughs> my dad would go get the breakfast. Uh huh. <clears throat> we'd eat. He'd he'd leave. Go go work. I'd hang around the hotel. I might go swimming. I'd read. That arcade opened up at eleven. Go in, cash in a dollar, play my games, my ten games, and then I'd walk over to that McDonald's with whatever tickets I had, mm-hmm. and I'd trade it in and get my lunch. And then they'd give me more tickets. <laughs> it's like I'd use my tickets. They'd give me more tickets, and uh-huh. I just, that's how I kept getting more and more of them. So anyway, that was. That arcade was probably the best arcade just because of the uh, the ten dollar deal. I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> that never happens when I record. It must be a barren thing. Yeah, because your parents it, sneeze it all really the time. Is. My mom has the most earth shattering mm-hmm. sneezes. Like I swear, you can hear it. It's like a gunshot. Now, if I was your dad, what would I have done just now when I sneezed? Uh, you would have done it. 12 more times. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Mac. Uh-huh. Your son knows you well. <laughs> you know, I I I see a lot of Tommy's mannerisms in you. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like the like some of the ways he talks and some of the just the phrases or like body language he uses. That's funny. Yeah. Don't it's... don't tell him that cuz then he'll <laughs> he'll stop doing it. Uh-huh. Um he probably would be horrified to hear you say that. I don't know if he would find that as a compliment or not. Do you know? Have you noticed any of that? Like you copying your dad's mannerisms? Yeah, yeah. Um, like it, it's it. Well, I don't know if it's a mannerism as much as it is a. Uh, it's a vocal tone, mm. like um, surprise when something funny or, or surprising happens. Uh, really really <laughs> it's like my it, it, that comes out and i'll go ah, that's not just like my dad uh-huh. like, you know and um you know and and some of it also because you, you know you do this it's like you, you notice things that your parents do right mm-hmm. and then you start joking about it right it, it becomes it, 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 an inside joke with like be, just you or just you or, or you even even with your parents yeah. or, or with your siblings right but then that inside joke becomes a real thing Mm -hmm. right and so then it becomes and 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 y'all always talk about you know your family shorthand little little phrases and things that you just say that really only your family would get that kind Mm -hmm. of thing and i think that there's a lot of that and 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 that probably my dad doesn't know 
that he has said things that that we have appropriated into our <laughs> <coughs> regular vernacular. Uh-huh. Um, that even even like I've said it enough around your parents that even your dad has like <laughs> your dad has has quoted my father. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And and my father wouldn't even know that he he said those things. Um. So, I my dad. Uh, it's a joke in our family that my dad sighs when he's. <sighs> Yeah, 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 but it's it's become the dad sigh. Right. So whenever you're dissatisfied with with how something's going, you or, just go, or it's gone on too long. <sighs> yeah. And it's... that tells everyone. Yeah. And like my dad really gets frustrated with very consistent annoying noises, like yeah, like that. He, he has a very low tolerance for that. Yeah. So one of the reasons and, why, and ironically, ironically though. He would love to do that to other people. <laughs> he 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 gets so annoyed at things that he does to mm-hmm. annoy people. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you do, Mac. You do. <laughs> um, but one of the reasons why I left Express. Oh, you did. I didn't. I didn't realize you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I are you at, not? Are you working now? Yeah, I work at Banana Republic. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, no, go ahead. Explain the laugh. I, I've just always found Banana Republic to be a funny name. <laughs> and 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 it's like, oh, we're going to open up a boutique clothing store. What are we gonna call it? Banana Republic. <laughs> I did. I um. I like to doodle on sticky notes at work. And one time, I made one where there's one banana and there's a bunch of bananas below it. Mm. And they said we should vote. <laughs> it's a Banana Republic. Oh. Um. But one of the reasons why I left Express is because every twenty minutes, every twenty minutes. There would be one of four ads for working at Express. Oh. And I can recite to you uh, all of them. Ah, no, oh, that was close. Did how, you did, even see? how did you manage that? I, I don't know. That my brain my brain was working over time. <laughs> I might not be able to answer any other questions at this point. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go ahead. Um, but one of them was, we know you like shopping at Express, but have you ever thought about working at Express? Well, oh, now's the time because good. we're hiring. Talk to our store manager today. You sound like you've heard that a few times. I've I would hear it 18 times every shift. You count I, it. You count I, it. I worked there for four months. Well, it's every 20 minutes, and, yeah. and I, I would work six-hour shifts. So Okay. Um, but I would be like, this is one of the reasons why I don't like working here. And my man, everyone else would be like, oh, I taunt it out. I'm like, well, because you don't have Mac Barron as your father. Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> well, because things like that, like he would – if he ever worked at Express, he would leave almost instantly because of how annoying the music and things like that are. Like, he would despise it. Mm. That's what I told him when I started working. I was like, Dad, you would hate working there. 